Hello? Hello. There we go. Hello, everyone. My name is Anori Casado. This is Dan Pirelli, Justin Barabander, as well as John Pedego, and together we're the developers behind TDJS. TDJS is a tower defense game with a twist. Tower defense is a real-time strategy game in which the objective is to prevent enemies from getting to a certain location on the map with towers. However, one of our biggest pet peeves while playing these tower defense games is the strange behavior that towers sometimes display. Our game solves this problem by giving you, the player, full control of your towers. By full control, I mean that you, the player, can now program your towers with JavaScript code. In terms of a technical overview, our game was built leveraging Angular classes, Angular ES6 classes, as well as events. We also implement the A-star algorithm in order to do pathfinding for our enemies. Finally, we give our users a map editor uh, mode where they can create, save, and share maps with all of the users on our platform. Now, Dan's going to talk a lot more about how our game works, as well as some of the tough game design decisions that we had to make. Hello. TDJS has four elemental theme towers. The Fire Tower specializes in area of effect damage. The Thunder Tower specializes in long range single target damage. The Ice Tower applies a slow. And the Poison Tower applies a damage over time effect. Each tower has two weapons, each with distinct gameplay and unique coding challenges. It's up to the player to decide when to use which weapon and to express that through their code. For projectiles, circular collision detection made sense, so we implemented some radius checking. And one of the first issues we ran into was getting the homing projectiles to actually home, to move towards their target. This wound up being some pretty straightforward trigonometry. What was more challenging was the fire tower's secondary weapon, codenamed the flamethrower. This was quite the complicated beast. Because we already had these nice circular hitboxes, our solution involved a series of circles approximating the shape of the flame. Here's Justin with the news. <laughs> well, Dan. Um, so we wanted to make our game we wanted to make it so you had to program the towers. So we made the default behavior of, of the towers to be pretty suboptimal. So in order to edit a tower, you can click on it, hopefully, um, and, and um, click on go to editor, in which case you will get access to a function that actually hooks into the internal game logic of that tower. Using the this keyword, you can set certain things about the tower. So you can get enemies using the get enemies method. You can also set the target using the set target method on the this.surroundings. Um, when you hit save code, that gets set up to be an event listener on the shoot event of the tower. Uh, now we're going to modify, we modified the ice tower to target multiple enemies, and now we're going to modify the, we're gonna modify the um, fire tower to target the first enemy in a wave. Because it leaves down a little like flame that hurts other, pe other enemies as they pass through it. And we can see the effect of it here. The default towers are only, they're only targeting one enemy, meanwhile the ice tower is targeting multiple enemies, and it's doing a much better job, obviously. And now here's John with the forecast. That's accurate. Look at all these awesome visual effects on the screen. These are all the ultimate weapons, um, which can be programmed in your towers using what Justin just described. And each of these, the graphics of each of these, are implemented using something called particle emitters. And ooh, look at that. <laughs> what, what particle emitters do is every single frame, they just emit a ton of particles. And each of these particles have a behavior over their lifetime. And throughout their lifetime, they'll change in shape, color, opacity, pretty much any other factor you want. And using this system, we created pretty much all of the visual effects that you will see on the screen right there. The big poison cloud, Sword of the Lightning, the meteors, like I just uh, ex explained, and the little fire in the, in the ice, and the, uh, yeah, like the snowblower effect. Yeah. Yeah, and I even the enemies, when they, when they run out of health, they turn into a particle emitter and they explode parts of their sprite out. Um, small lifetime particle middle. We are tower defense uh, JavaScript, uh, <laughs> TDJS. Uh, we, <laughs> we, you can visit our game at tdjsgame.com. TDJS uh, we hope you do, and thank you very much for coming out.